Hey guys, this is an infrared heater with a heat powered fan attached to the top. It is super easy to build. It burns very clean fuel and it gets extremely hot. I've measured it at over 500 degrees, so it works really good. If you want to take a look and see how we put this together, just keep watching and I'll show you exactly how to make one for yourself. Now the first thing is to build our structure of our infrared heater is I've taken this Dutch oven. This is the top of it. This is the bottom. And this is just a ex heat exhaust pipe. It's stainless steel. It's not galvanized. And so it's going to act as a reflector to our infrared heater. Now one thing I do wish I had, I wish I had a much larger, like a 20 gallon pot because I want to use this portion is a sand battery which will retain the heat and so even if our infrared heater cuts off it will still be radiating heat in my greenhouse and so that's one thing to remember is if you can get a much larger base pot stainless steel something like a large boiling pot i'm thinking between 15 and 20 gallons that would really be a bonus over that i'm planning on upgrading this if i can get to the second hand store and find one i don't want to use a new one because they're very expensive but if i could find one like at the goodwill or a second hand store i'll definitely buy it and update you on that as well so the first step in putting this together is i'm going to remove oh i know this loud i'm going to remove the top and i'm going to turn our dutch oven around and try not to make too much noise. But what we're wanting to do is we want to fill this as high as possible with sand and that's going to act as a sand battery that will slowly radiate heat. I'm going to try to get around to that side of the table and add that as well. Now we want to fill this with sand but I want this as open as much as possible because this is going to act as a reflector and act as an infrared heater. So I'm just going to try to do this without making a massive amount of noise. I may have to cut this out. so. I'll just open that up. Now I'm going to have to use my soil scoop to get sand in all the way around the outside because I want our reflector as it gets hot we want it sitting in complete sand on the inside and the outside and that's going to help warm the sand as well okay so i've completely filled the bottom portion of our dutch oven with sand our reflector is kind of wedged in there it can easily be pulled out because this is dry sand but we want it sitting completely on the bottom so it's going to maximize the heat of the sand i'm going to put our lid on and just try not to make too much noise doing that and so that is the basic outline of how it's going to work but there's some interior components we've got to put together now now the next thing we're going to do we're going to open up a couple of cans of peaches and I think this is a 30 ounce can, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the paper. So that's going to be in the way. And it's going to probably catch on fire if we were to leave it on there. So that absolutely has to be removed. We're going to empty the contents and clean out the can and move on to the next step. All right, I'm going to open this can. Try not to make too much noise. I know that sand is really loud on this mic. It picks up every little noise. So I'm going to do that. We're going to try to get this out of there without it falling back into the can. Oh, did it anyways. Okay. I think we can just push it up there. We're going to empty the peaches and we'll eat those later. And I'm going to go rinse this out. And this is going to be the outer portion of our infrared heater. All right, we're going to punch four holes in the bottom of this can. Now, this is the top. We're at the bottom here. So we're going to punch four holes there. And I'm just going to put four equally spaced points doesn't have to be an exact science but we just want them to be basically four at the bottom it's bent the can a little bit but that's perfectly okay now sometimes you'll there'll be a little bit of glue residue you can just take a razor blade and get this on film right here and just scrape it off there should come off pretty easily but just take a sharp razor blade if you leave that on there that glue may get really hot and release a really foul odor so i would just recommend getting all the glue off once you remove the label, make sure there's none on there. Now we're going to do the same thing with our internal can, and it's going to be slightly smaller. And this one may be a little bit easier to open, but we still have that glue on the outside. So remember to take your razor blade and scrape that glue off. All right, and we're going to open this one. 
and empty the contents into a Tupperware that we can eat later. And we're going to go rinse this one out and we'll make that one ready as the internal part of the heater. It's going to sit down in there like that. And this will also have one small hole in the center just to release any of the pressure and make sure it doesn't build up and spray out. But that's how it's going to sit in there. That's, that is the mechanism for the heater. And there's one thing that needs to be replaced inside of the larger can. I'll show you that as soon as I put the holes in the smaller of our two cans. All right, we have our four holes in our interior can. I'm gonna show you how this fits together like that. But there's one more thing that has to go into this larger can and it's the critical component of allowing the fuel to wick up to the flame area. Now our wick is gonna be made out of carbon felt and this is purchased on Amazon. I'll put a link to that down below, but this is 100% carbon felt and that's what you have to make sure you're using. This will not burn up. It will just continually act as a wick and it's the perfect product to use as a wick for this type of stove because it will last virtually forever. Right, we wanna make sure our carbon felt is the exact size, so I'm gonna measure that and cut it, and I'm probably gonna do two layers of it, but I just wanna make sure it's just the right size. It's gonna come up right up to the edge of our internal, oh, excuse me, our outer can, so we want two layers of this around the outside, so I'm gonna measure that and cut it very carefully. Right, we're gonna take our razor blade, I'm just going to make sure we're at the right size. Hopefully we're not moving this too much. And we're going to cut this off at just the right height. I'm going to carefully cut this so we have two good layers of the carbon felt. And that should fit right inside of there. No problem. And we may actually have to take a little bit off because we don't want three layers. I just want two inside of this can. All right, so this is our outer can. This is our inner can. They're going to fit in there like that. I'm going to wrap the inner can two times with our carbon felt. And just make sure it's good and tight around that. And this is going to be our forever wick. I'm just going to carefully place it in there. It's going to be a tight fit, so you may have to force it in there. I can feel air coming out of that one. And so that... Makes a really tight fit. You may have to do this two or three times to get the wick at just the right height. This is far too high. I'm going to work with it until I get it at just the right height. I may actually cut just a little bit off the bottom as well. Now, after doing this a couple of times, what I realized is that I could twist it and it would go in there a lot easier. So just trying to force it in there is not going to work too easily. So if you want to have two layers, you may have to do that. As you're inserting that can, just twist it slowly and it'll go in there a lot easier. You can see it's just at a perfect height now right at the rim of the outer can. Okay, so I had to do a little bit of extra drilling here with a larger drill bit. This is our fuel refill, and I had to do some push. I had to push the metal back in there because I don't want metal sticking up. I want it down inside there so it doesn't cut any hands in the future use of this. So I just pushed it back inside of the interior can, but I wanted to make sure it fit my kitchen funnel well. This is going to be our fuel refill. I'm going to fill it about one quarter of the way and do some tests, but I would recommend you taking this outside Run your test outdoors. Also, this carbon felt will probably need to have a little bit of the fuel poured on it. Our fuel source is al rubbing alcohol, and so we just want to make sure that our carbon felt has is saturated. Also, we have about a quarter of a container. Then run your test and see how it works. All right, we're going to put our rubbing alcohol in there. Not a lot. It's probably about one quarter of a can. We're going to carefully wet the outer area and get our carbon felt wet with this. And then I'm gonna carefully wipe everything down and take it outside. I'm not gonna light this inside because there's rubbing alcohol on the outside. So I'm gonna wipe everything down and light it outside with a kitchen torch. And that way I can just stand back and make sure everything is safe and I don't have to worry about something flaming up and just take it somewhere where it's safe to light and use safety glasses as well. Okay, I've brought it outside. I've lit it, nothing went, nothing malfunctioned. So we're looking good and we're going to carefully watch it for a little while and see, make sure the wicking action starts, keeps going and it stays hot. But we're not, we have another part we have to do, but I just wanted to take it outside and make sure that's a good safety precaution. It's also good to have a fire extinguisher handy, handy just in case something goes wrong. 
Now it took me a while to find the perfect stainless steel mesh. This one I felt was too fine. It's not going to work. This one I ordered from Amazon. I think it would work, but the size of it is a little bit large, but the perfect size is this right here and I'll link it down below. But I think this is the perfect size mesh that we're going to use to create the infrared action of our heater. Now, although this looks like window screen, it is not. It's quite a bit thicker and it's made from stainless steel and not fiberglass. But what we're going to do is I'm going to take my stainless steel mesh and I'm going to use our inner can as a guide. We're going to wrap it around there and cut it and then put it together. Make sure you wear a pair of gloves when you do this because the edges of this is quite sharp. But that's what we're doing. We're just going to create that size so it'll fit on the inner can so it will act as that infrared source and it will start reflecting to our reflector and re reflect heat out. It will heat up our cast iron base, our cast iron top, and I've got an added feature on the top that will actually circulate air a little bit. But this is the key to it is the infrared, excuse me, this is the key to it. It is the stainless steel mesh. Now what I've done on this is I've created a hook where it hooks together. On one piece I've bent it around at an angle and the underside I've bent it up and so it kind of hooks together and it kind of holds itself in place. So that's a little tricky to do. It's not a perfect circle anymore but that will hold itself in that shape. What we're creating is a cylinder so you need to make sure it stays together and you just need to create that U hook one way, U hook the other way and then hook them together like that so it doesn't come open. So that's that's the easiest way to do it. It's not perfect, but that will stay together like that. Okay, to keep my table from getting too hot, I put some ceramic uh, pot. You put these below pots. They actually normally are like this under a flower pot like that, but I'm just turning them on their side so my table will not get too hot and I don't have to worry about ruining the paint on this very cheap made table. But we're going to set our pot there and then we're going to relight it and we're going to do some additional things at the top. Now this is the basic layout. We have our steel mesh in the center. We have our bottom can that also has an internal can, the hole punched in it so we can add more fuel to it. Our carbon felt surrounds the inside of this. We have our original can that we cut. I put holes in that so no gas buildups that can escape there. This will get very hot and the inside of this will get hot. It will reflect heat out. Heat will be reflected out of this too. The sand will also retain heat as well as the cast iron pot. The cast iron pot on top will also get hot. I'm going to refuel our fuel to maximum and then I'm going to light it. We're going to let it get hot and I'll show you the final item we're putting on the top. Okay, I've relit our stove from the outside. We're going to let that heat up and I'll show you one additional thing we're placing on top of our heater. Now it's a little bit hard to tell with the lights on, so I'm going to cut the lights off so you can see that the stainless steel mesh is starting to heat up quite a bit. One more thing I'm going to add is a heat powered fan. This is going to help circulate the warmer air around the greenhouse. It'll take a little bit while, a few minutes for this to get really hot on the bottom, but there's an electro motor in there. It requires no external power, but it's self powered by the heat. I'm just going to set that on top and allow it, give it a few minutes to heat up. And it's showing, a, it was, let's see, we're, we're hitting over 300 degrees there. And so that heat is going to be reflected back out into the greenhouse and it will just slowly continue to, continue to burn about four to five hours. And then once it goes out, we'll still have that sand that's down below that's heated and it will also release heat. So you're getting heat source from the flame initially, but when the, that goes out, eventually you'll still have heat in your sand and your cast iron pot slowly re rating out into my greenhouse. Now the heat powered fan is working quite well. And as long as this burns, that fan will continue to operate and circulate just a little bit of added heat to the greenhouse. And the lower area, that, that cast iron pot will get hot and stay hot for quite a while as well. Now, there's a lot of things you can use as the cap portion, which I've got some stainless steel pet bowls. You could use that as a cap. You can use, like I did in this demonstration, the actual top can, but just it's really hot around this edge as you can really feel it putting out heat. My fan is working great. It's going to slowly circulate heat, but I will say it just takes a little while to heat up. And one crucial thing about that wick, the wick has to get really hot, to start flowing that alcohol. Once it does, you'll see a lot more flame. It might die down if it's burning the alcohol and you'll see that more of a blue flame. It's a little harder to see. I'm going to cut the light out one more time so you can see how hot it is with the flame going.
So guys, I do recommend that you have a carbon monoxide detector, a smoke detector, a fire extinguisher. I recommend you trying it outside first to do your test to make sure nothing, nothing flames up really quickly. And just remember that you are dealing with an open flame and you need to be extra careful. So guys, if you found this helpful, I hope you'll like and subscribe. If there's any way you would think of doing it differently, leave a comment down below. But have a great day.